Hey, my name is Leslie Gordon and thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'll be discussing our recent work on entry fatigue, how stretch is overstretched, and this is joint work with Leo Duca. So let's get started with an overview. Entry is a let's based public-key crypto system of which many variants exist. One of which, simply known as Entry, is a NIST post quantum crypto finalist. Until recently, lattice reduction attacks were thought to be similar as on RIM LWE. However, for large overstretch more like Q, lattice reduction attacks have been shown to behave even better. And the main question of our work is to understand when do we go from this understretched to this overstretched regime, as that is currently unclear. So our contributions are, we explain precisely how lattice reduction breaks overstretch and through, and we predict precisely when lattice reduction attacks break overstretch and through. So what's exactly the end through problem? Well, first we have a secret key that consists of small elements F and G in some ring R. Then we have a public key H that's given by G times F inverse modulo Q for the modulus Q, assuming that F is invertible. And throughout this presentation, you can assume that R is equal to Zx quotient by X to the N minus one, and that F and G are just like polynomials with coefficients uh, in minus one, zero and one. Now the entry problem asks to, given the public key H, recover the secret key F and G, or any rotation of them, as that's kind of equivalent. Alternatively, given the public key, you could just ask to find any shortest pair uh, A dot B, such that H times A is equal to B mod Q, and note that the, the secret key satisfies this. But for any such short pair, we might be able to uh, break the crypto system already. To apply lattice reduction attacks, we first need to define the so-called entry lattice. And this is exactly the lattice that consists out of all of such pairs A dot B, so that H times A is equal to B mod Q. So if uh, R has degree N, then this lattice has dimension two times N, and the determinant is equal to Q to the N. Now this lattice has two special properties. First, it contains the secret key and all its rotations, and these are for most of the parameters, unusually short factors in this lattice. And secondly, these rotations also generate an unusually dense sublattice of rank n inside of this 2n dimensional lattice. Now the first property gives us the best attack for a small model of Q, and it's similar to attacks on unique SAP or what we call unusual SAP. And for the second property, uh, that gives us the best attack for large model Q, and this is actually what we call the overstretch regime. And our question is what's the crossover between these two attacks, and we define this as the fatigue point. So let reduction is the process of turning a basis that consists of long and not so orthogonal vectors into a good basis of short and almost orthogonal vectors. So given a basis B, that consists of factors B0 up to B D minus one, um, we first define the projection PY away from the first I basis vectors. And this allows us then to define the so-called Gronschmidt basis, where BI star is given by uh, the, the BI base element projected away from the previous base elements. And note that we have the invariant that the product of all these Gronschmidt basis elements, the norm of them, is equal to the determinant of the lattice. And this means in the picture that the volume underneath these two uh, log plots must be equal. Now for a bad basis that consists of large factors, uh, this, base, this profile starts very high and then quickly decreases. For a good basis, the profile is much flatter. To obtain such a good basis, we can use the BKZ algorithm. So first we have to define the so-called projected sublattice uh, between L and R. So we just take the basis element L up to R minus one, and we project them away from all previous base vectors. And then the BKZ algorithm uh, tries at any, any position kappa, it looks at the block, the projected sublattice between kappa and kappa plus beta. And then it tries to find the shortest vector in this projected sublattice and lifts it, to, lifts it back to the full lattice and then replace uh, this base element there. So what does that mean in practice is that we find this, this short factor here and we decrease the profile at this point. 
And of course, because of the, the invariant on the, on the total uh, volume underneath this uh, plot, uh, we also get some changes in the rest of the profile. And if you repeat this, um, then for a large block size beta, you get flatter and flatter profiles. However, the cost of this uh, reduction is exponential in the block size, so we have to be careful with that. So for the rest of the presentation, we will uh, account for the complexity of, of solving the entry problem in terms of this block size uh, beta. And what's nice is that the behavior of uh, big AC is pretty well understood uh, for so-called like random uh, lattices. And what we can do is we can see that these are almost form a straight line and the, the angle that they give can be predicted by the so-called geometric series assumption. So let us first focus on the understretch regime where BKZ finds the unusually short secret key. So BKZ is expected to find this unusually short factor when the projection to this uh, last bo block at position d minus beta is less than the Gronschmidt norm there because then the projection is actually the shortest factor in this block. Now the blue line here represents the expected length of this projection and the orange line is the, the GSA of, uh, in this case, uh, beta is in BKC. Now we see now that at this position, the expected length of the projection is much larger than the Gronschmidt norm, so we don't expect BKC to find it. However, if we increase the reduction, then at some point these lines cross. And at this point, we are expected to find the projection of this short factor. And now we also, uh, it's also very likely that the short factor is actually lifted all the way back to the full context. So we recover the unusually short factor or the unusually short secret key. So this is better known as the GSA intersect method or the 2016 estimate. And BKC finds the unusually short factor when beta is at least n over log q up to logarithmic factors. Additionally, you can turn this analysis into an average case uh, heuristic analysis, and that gives concrete predictions. And if we apply this to our entry problem, we can give very precise uh, predictions in the low, uh, in the understretch regime for low Q. However, we see that in the overstretch regime for large Q, uh, this prediction doesn't match. And this fatigue point is already at uh, quite low values of Q. Okay, so let us now consider the second attack. Recall that the entry lattice has a dense n-dimensional sub-lattice. And our question is when does big AC uh, find this n-dimensional sub-lattice in some sense? So Kirchner and Fuchs try to answer this by using the following uh, pataki draw lemma that says that for any n-dimensional sub-lattice, we have the following constraint. Namely that the determinant of this sub-lattice is at least the product of the n smallest Gronschmidt norms of the full lattice. So to turn this into an attack, we also need to abuse the fact that we know quite a good basis of our lattice. So using only public information, we can create a basis of which the first n Gronschmidt factors have norm q, and of which the last n Gronschmidt factors have norm 1. And this kind of gives a z-shape. Now, if we apply reduction to this basis, and what we see in practice is the, that these flat parts stay the same, but in the middle we get kind of a slope. And this slope can again be predicted by the geometric series assumption. So if we upgrade our geometric series assumption, we kind of get a C-shape geometric series assumption. So what does the pataki all lemma say in combination with the C-shape? Well, first, the determinant of this dense sub-lattice can be represented by the area of this rectangle. On the right side, we have the product of the smallest n constraint factors, which are just the last n constraint factors, assuming the z-shape. And so that's just the area underneath this plot. But now if we increase uh, the reduction, then at some point this inequality can't be true anymore. So something must have happened. Uh, and Kirchner and Fuch reason that at such a point, we must have found the dense sublattice in some way. And note that this is quite a uh, unclear statement. But if you run this analysis, then what Kirchner Fu got that BKC finds the dense sublattice in some way when the block size beta is at least n over log squared q. And note that now we have this log squared instead of just uh, the log q. 
So for growing Q, at some point, this attack must become better than the first attack. And indeed, in practice, this breaks several FHC schemes uh, that use very large model IQ. Uh, and if you run the analysis for this fatigue point, then for ternary F and G, uh, the fatigue point is supposed to lie at about n to the power 2.783. Uh, but note that this is just an upper bound, as the analysis is just a worst case uh, analysis. And also, we have no clue what's hidden inside of this little o of 1. So, a few problems with this method is first, we have no clue how big AC actually finds these dense subplots factor, only that something must have happened. Uh, secondly, it only gives an upper bound on the fatigue point. And also, because this lemma is quite a worst case statement, uh, we can go give go no concrete predictions using this, and it's far from actual practical behavior that we see. So given that we want to understand how and when BKC solves the entry problem, let's first see what happens in practice. But for this, to run experiments, we first need to define what we are looking at. And for this, we define some events. So first we define the secret key recovery event at some position kappa. And this uh, triggers when a vector as short as the secret key vector, so the secret key vector and the rotation, is inserted in the base at position kappa during BKC. Secondly, we have the so-called dense subplatz discovery event. Uh, and that triggers if a dense subplatz vector from this uh, subplatz is generated by the secret key, longer than the secret key is inserted in the bases uh, at position kappa. So we run BKC on an true lattice with n equal to 127 uh, for different model IQ. And we looked at which block size it was uh, first uh, solved. It found the, the secret key or the then subplot discovery. So we see that in the understruct regime, we mostly see SKR events. While in the overstruct regime, we mostly see these dense subplot discovery events. Now in terms of positions, we see that for the SKR events, that they mostly happen uh, at around the dimension minus beta, exactly as predicted uh, by the, the first attack. For these dense subplot discovery events, we see that these happen at positions much more uh, central, so a bit close to uh, n. And in the, around the fatigue point, we see that both events happen. Uh, so high position mostly SKR events and at low positions mostly DSD events. And what's important to know is that after such a DSD event, we saw in practice that BKC quickly recovers the full secret key. Uh, but even if this does not happen, we explain in our paper how you can, given such a dense subplot vector, can uh, recover the secret key with much more efficient algorithms. So we have observed in practice that in the overstretch regime, uh, BKC solves the entry problem by first finding a dense subplot vector at some position kappa. So let's try to turn this into an estimate. So for such a uh, dense subplot vector uh, that's inserted at position kappa, note that it must be generated by the first kappa plus beta lattice vectors or basis vectors. So why don't we just assume that this vector is indeed the shortest vector that is generated uh, by these first k plus beta uh, base vectors, and it also lies in the dense subplatus. And this is exactly our estimate. Uh, and following the same methodology of the 2016 estimate, we then say that uh, beta BKZ triggers this DSD cap event if the projection of this particular uh, dense subplatus vector is less than the ground speed norm at the position kappa. And note that the ground speed norm of this vector, because we assume it's the shortest one, is given by the first minimum uh, of the intersection between the dense sublattice and the first, and the lattice band by the first k plus beta uh, base vectors. And to estimate this first minimum, we have the Minkowski bound uh, that gives a bound of the first minimum in terms of the determinant of this lattice. So in our case, we need to uh, guess the determinant of this intersection. And to achieve this goal, we made a generalization of the Pataki Tural lemma that says that for any uh, n dimensional sublattice L prime, we can uh, bound the determinant of this intersection with the first uh, S basis vectors and this dense sublattice. 
and this is always bounded by the determinant of this dead sublattice multiplied again by some uh, thing that depends on the cross mean norms. And to see that this generalized about the Kitty Roll lemma, let's just assume the, the, the case that k is zero. And then uh, we in the proof you can assume that this is equal to one. And then this gives exactly uh, the old Patekitra lemma. So we can analyze when BKC inserts such a dense sublattice factor at any position kappa. And optimizing over this position, we find that uh, the best case is at position around n minus beta over 2. So what we find is that BKC finds a dense sublattice factor at position n minus beta over 2. Uh, when beta is at least n over log squared q. So note that asymptotically, uh, we still get kind of the same results. However, if we zoom in closer uh, and take q equal to n to the power of q and the size of our secret key about n to the s and beta is linear in, in n, then we do actually see some uh, improvements. Namely, with the old Kirchhoff estimate, we got that the b, big b must be at least 8s over q squared, and we improved it with a plus 1 in the denominator. So what this means is that the fatigue point, instead of lying at n to the power 2.783, it now lies at n to the power 2.484. But more importantly, because our analysis explains precisely what happens, we can turn this into heuristic average case analysis and use this to make concrete predictions. And we can see that now, instead of just giving uh, good predictions in the understructed regime, we can also give very concrete and precise predictions in the overstretch regime. So given that we now understand the understretch and overstretch regime, we can also easily make predictions for the fatigue point. So for ternary secrets, FNG, uh, the concrete fatigue point seems to lie at around 0 0.004 times n to the power 2.484. And note that this fully explains why this fatigue point already lies very low in the experiments that we did. However, because this exponent is still rather large, um, this fatigue point lies much higher than the NIST parameters being used. So all the schemes that are being used now indeed lie uh, in the understructed regime. So what's important to note in the overstretched regime, the security really depends on the volume of this dense sublattice. And if you sample a random ternary key, then the volume of this dense sublattice can vary a lot. Uh, even the, the security in terms of the block size can vary from slightly below 30 all the way up to 50. So if you truly want to understand the security in this regime, then just an average case uh, analysis might not be enough. So while our analysis captures most of the events that we see in practice, and also allows us to give very concrete predictions that match experiments. Uh, there are some uh, events that we can't fully explain. So we see that most events indeed happen around n minus uh, the predicted block size, and that's captured by our uh, model. However, some of these DSD events happen at higher positions, and these are not captured by our model. Additionally, we note that the factors that are inserted here are much longer than the ones we find here. Uh, however, their projection on this uh, block is much, much smaller than what you would expect. So the probability of this happen happening is very small. However, there might be a lot of these, these factors and that might uh, account for this uh, probability. Um, and then also you have a very small probability that actually this factor is lifted back uh, to the correct uh, long uh, dense subplots factor. And that's why we call them uh, lucky lifts. So in our work, we give some starting points on how to uh, run the analysis for these things. Uh, but at the same time for experiments, uh, these things don't happen at any other uh, block sizes than what you already predict. So, so far they don't seem to uh, matter that much. So let's get us to the key takeaways. So we can now give concrete predictions for all values of the modulus Q, both in the understretched and in the overstretched regime. Uh, we now fully understand the fatigue points. And while it lies much lower than expected, it still lies well above NIST parameters. Uh, and you have to be wary about the large variance in the volume of this uh, dense sublattice, as this has a large influence on the block size uh, that's required. So the code for all experiments is available at this address.
And thank you for watching this video. Here you can see the, the bibliography. Thanks. And I hope to see you soon at the physical conference.